Welcome everybody to episode 51 of the Serial Chillers podcast. I'm your host, Jesse. It's good to have you here. Today, I've got three in-studio guests who traveled from another town specifically to be on this show. I'd like to give a big thank you and a big welcome to Travis, Tiffany, and Susanna. Of course, co-host Greg is across the internet. And today, we talk about serial killer, possible serial confessor, definitely serial confessor, Gerald Stano. Um, we'll get into the story a little bit, and we have a lot of fun, and the competition is fierce. Sit back, relax, and enjoy episode 51 of the Serial oh, Chillers Podcast. Oh, I see that. <laughs> All right, let's get going then. Welcome, everybody, to episode 51 of the Serial Chillers Podcast for the first time from the completed Super Network Studio. You guys are a first time for a lot of things. First time in the completed studio. Ooh. You guys are the first time we've had three guests in the studio, in any studio. Oh. And you guys are the uh, farthest traveled specifically for the show of all time. Uh-huh. Yeah, so... Uh, Setting records. Yeah, you guys are just trailblazing here. So uh, let's hope you can keep up the pace. It's a tough act to follow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So uh, I'll introduce uh, my in-studio guests, since we're talking about it, to my left. Tiffany, hello. Hi. Welcome. Straight it's great to be here. You're, it's great to have you here. Straight across from me is Travis. How's it going? You guys know him from the sweet fucking artwork he did for the show with my dumb, stupid face. Yeah, thank you. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's a wonderful piece of art. Yeah. And to my right, Susanna, welcome. Oh, hey, hi. Hey, all right, everybody, three guests joining us in the studio across the internet from his bunker far, far away. Who knows where it is? How goes it, co-host Greg? Uh, chilling and shit. Q, Q. Respect, respect. Uh, you guys know how the show works, but let me explain it for anyone that doesn't. Each week, I sit down with old friends, new friends, good friends, and bad friends to tell the story of an infamous serial killer. Throughout the show, you guys can chime in on my story, and if you brought a story of your own that is true crime, dark, creepy, unsolved, or otherwise mysterious, please feel free to share it. I hear Greg may have something. May. Lastly, if you have what questions about questions, make sure to ask questions, because I cannot answer questions about questions if you never ask questions. Are there any questions? Uh, no questions. No. Then welcome to and let's play the Serial Chillers podcast. Yes. All right. Today's serial killer, Gerald Stano. Shut up. You do <laughs> not know him. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. You do not. She's. All right, so immediately Tiffany worried about Susanna's poker face across the table. We're going to see what happens, because if you listen to the show, you know, question number one, in what year was Gerald Stano born? I'm trying to think what kind of name Gerald is and like what. That's an old, that's an old name for sure. I don't know, Gerald from Hey Arnold. I mean, he's he was like, uh, what, 12 at the time? Yeah. You know? <laughs> There's also the comedian Gerald Seinfeld. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. What year was Gerald Ford president? <laughs> yeah, uh, Gerald Ford, was, wasn't he president after uh, Nixon, or was that Carter? I, I just say I'm the one to ask the questions uh, around here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Gerald Ford was president in 74. I think. Hold on. I got I got such an arbitrary story. guess, I bet. <laughs> I bet it's closer than you think. I'm waiting for a Google answer. Uh we're gonna give you the Google answer after you give us your answer. Nineteen seventy five. Nineteen seventy five. Nineteen seventy three. Nineteen fifty three. Travis says nineteen fifty three and almost scores a thousand bonus points because Gerald Stano was born September 12th, 1951. First to strike, Travis with 250 points. I knew Gerald was old. So oh, it's worth it. Gerald Ford was president uh, from August 9th, 1974 to January 20th, 1977. So I did say you did 1974. Say 74. Yeah. And, I, I don't uh, disagree. You're correct. 
Don't forget to put some respect on my name. Didn't I'll never, actually help. But yeah, thank I, you. I, I, I won't do that, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'll give you uh, respect for the answer. Thank you. Appreciate yes. it. Uh, back to your producer Greg days, huh? Thank you so much. <laughs> <clears throat> so. <laughs> Uh, September 12th, 1951, Gerald Stano is born in Schenectady, New York. Thank you for giving me the one upstate New York city that I can pronounce. Thank you. But he was born as Paul Zeiniger. His mother had four children before him, all of whom she gave up for adoption, but she kept him. After him, she had another child, a girl who had brain damage. This was about a year later. And she kept the girl and then gave the one-year-old Gerald Stano away. Well, Paul Zeiniger. What? Yes. Why? No wonder he's a serial killer. At 13 months. That's like months, half of these stories. More than half of these stories. It only gets worse. This is, so, you know, the one I always use is Eileen Wernos. I feel like she had one of the worst kind of family and upbringing may have caused it kind of situations. And you, you genuinely at some points go like, oh, fuck. No, like there, there was another one. He had like. He got his eyeball knocked out, so he had a glass eye from being a young, like, as a young kid. Got oh, made Sandy Duncan. Henry Lee Lucas. No. Henry Lee Lucas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. His story was really, really and messed his up. His dad had no legs, and he scurried around. Yes, and then uh, he was, like, an alcoholic, really and then he, yeah. And his mom was a prostitute, mm-hmm. and used to make him watch, and used to beat him till he fell asleep, and all kinds of shit. That uh, was another I story. remember when my mom used to beat me to sleep. <laughs> oh, okay, so at 13 months old, he's been put into the system. He was assessed by a team of psychologists, physicians, and social workers, and they deemed him not fit for adoption at this time due to such severe neglect by his mother in only the one year of living. Mm. He was functioning at an animalistic level, they said. He would, uh, cr- he would only crawl. He would only grunt. He was feral. And that's almost essentially what it was. And he said, they said the only thing that they believed he was ever able to play with was his own feces because that's, even though they provided him toys and things like, to at, get at, going. At one know. years old? At one year old. That's all he would, yeah. It's that's so sad. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not going to feel bad for him later on. In this no, story, you're not. But. You're not. You're not. But at 19 months, it's now 1953, he's adopted by Eugene and Norma Stano. His name was changed from Paul Zeiniger to Gerald Eugene Stano. Uh, Norma was a social worker, and Eugene was a manager for a large corporation. So uh, he lives a fairly normal young childhood once he is taken in by, uh, by his adoptive parents. They obviously had an uphill battle ahead of them when they brought him in. It was a very extensive, because it's only six months between the time they say, like, he is not adoptable this is not going to work and they come and adopt him so Did they know what they were getting themselves yeah into? absolutely they th- i think well, they bless their hearts yeah i think that was kind of the deciding factor for them was because they, they had six months of work with doctors and you know they, he was definitely not uh at least on an animalistic level anymore when they adopted him but he, he was not a um on the normal curve of a 19 month old's development uh, by any means um, so Eugene and Norma, yeah, kind of heroes in a way. Um, so one of the things that we see in serial killers too is, is the bedwetting. Uh, question number two, until what age would Gerald wet the bed? <clears throat> what do we got? Tiffany says nine, Travis says 13, and 11. Uh, Let's see. So uh, Tiffany and Susanna are going to both get points on this because he peed the bed until he was 10. We're gonna uh, we're gonna split the difference there. So does that mean like we only get one hundred and twenty-five? No, no, we're gonna go two fifty for both yes. of you guys. You guys scored. Uh, you guys scored the real deal. Is there still more points when you stab versus? Multiple choice, or is that when there are is multiple choice and it oh, is okay. stabbable? Got most it. of the questions I've been writing lately, like if someone were to stab it, I'll give you one million points because it's like they're usually pretty bizarre. But uh, if an opportunity comes, you will definitely be given. And in most of these, like when it's a number or something, I will uh, for that one, I have that I would do 500 for nailing it. So if someone would have guessed 10, you would have got 500. If someone guesses the birth year, it was a thousand. 
Uh, so for nailing some of the answers that you just have to guess on, there are definitely some bonus points involved. But as of right now, three-way tie at 250 points. We have 10 questions today, you guys. So Boom. there are We just uh, did two. There are eight more, but some of them come really fast, so be ready. Uh, he wets the bed until he's 10 years old. Uh, during his adolescence, it was reported uh, that he had trouble relating to kids his age and typically stayed to himself. Uh, pretty clear why that was the case, yeah. I feel like. You know, sometimes you're like, why wouldn't, you know, why no, couldn't he you just get no along idea, with kids? Like, what yeah. to do. It was yeah. like he was raised by wolves. He plays with I his poop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't let a 10-year-old play with their poop. Be realistic. <laughs> I, I hope he's still not doing it. I that. hope not either. Yeah. So, to answer your question, no. Sometimes 10-year-olds play with each other's poop. <laughs> oh, God damn it. So he's, he's obviously at this time staying to himself. <laughs> he's a very um, lonely, loner young man. Um, he was... Uh, also a target for bullies, and apparently there was a group of mean girls at his school that kind of uh, beat down on him pretty hard. I bet you they were wearing fucking poodle dresses and had their <laughs> hair up and punked stupid numbs. Uh, he was he was obviously uh, as the loner weird kid who potentially plays with poop. Uh, he was. <laughs> You're the poop guy. Yeah, we oh, heard about God. what you did at 13 months. Jerry poop Ew. face. Yeah. Uh, yeah he, he had a hard time in school. He was the target of a lot of, uh, I, I, I never really, I think it was a lot of verbal. He doesn't, I didn't see a lot of, he got his ass kicked and he got swirlies and he had to go home yeah. bleeding, but it was a lot of, uh, he got made fun of a lot. Yeah. I think in the fifties, uh, uh, somebody who was developmentally disabled may have been, uh, called uh, the R oh, word, yes. uh, pretty hard. Ooh. And I think that that was getting uh, thrown at him quite a bit, even though technically, uh, he was he was his intelligence level wasn't actually low his but his uh animalistic instincts were um he they said he had good problem solving skills even though he played with poop if so, i stick the poop in here yeah. maybe <laughs> he does those little tests little they do crows <laughs> to find food yeah uh so uh yeah he's he's a he's a target to the bully um in 1965 to 66 we're moving on he's 14 to 15 years old and we hit question number three. What would Gerald's first arrest be for at the Ooh. age of 14? This one won't be, any, won't be stabbable. I'm going to give you four options. Oh. Okay. Choose two. Oh. Therefore, 250 points each. So if you get two, this is potential 500. If you miss both, potential zero. So you have to pick two. Yes. Got to pick okay. two. There okay. will be four. So... Question number three, what was Gerald's first arrest for? It'll be at the age of 14. Was it arson of a church, throwing rocks from a bridge into traffic, pulling a fire alarm, or hurting a small animal? Oof. So A, arson, B, throwing rocks, C, pulling the fire alarm, D, hurting small animals. Let me know if you need me to repeat it. I, can do I have that. a follow-up because I might have zoned out. <laughs> Did he do both of these things, or are we just taking two shots? He, he's going to t he's going to have done two of these four okay. things, correct? Uh, Ooh. Yeah. And this it, is his first. This first is the first offense. thing he's going to be arrested them? for. He, I mean, he could have been fucking around before right, this. Right. For he sure. did them okay. both in the same incident. He, uh, so he's no, but he's a, he was arrested during one, but they knew he was responsible for another. So he's going to be charged with both at okay. the same time. What was the third choice again? Nope. It was uh, pulling a false fire alarm. Who hasn't done that? Me. I, uh, I, I squeezed the extinguisher <laughs> in the seventh grade. I <laughs> thought the pin was in it, and somebody had pulled the pin. I was able to successfully be like, well, it wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't do it. And I have a good like, story oh, that about adrenaline that rush. for you uh, at another time. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Perfect. All right. You guys got answers for me? Take your time Tiffany, if you Tiffany's need. Greg, 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 will, Greg will be mad because he's going to have to edit it. methodical, but. I mean... There's a lot of things to think about here. Okay, okay. I'm just, I just. Did you take dark. both my answers? Probably, maybe. But then we both get points. You guys, got some answers? Yes. Yes. All right. What do we got? We'll start on the left. Tiffany says. Rocks, rock throwing. I just wrote rocks. Okay. In good. my shorthand, and then um, the hurting of the animals. Okay, rocks and animals. Rocks. I, I, I also went rocks, 
And I feel like all serial killers hurt animals, so I figured that was a good guess. Uh, rocks and animals as well. Okay, uh, I feel like animals was the obvious answer, and I'm hoping that my decision is right. I went with arson and rocks. Arson and rocks. <laughs> rocks was... Rocks is a very popular answer. You guys feel like that's a Gerald Stano type thing, and you're all going to get 250 points oh. for that. However... Uh-oh. Well, he doesn't seem to be much more evolved than, than hucking rocks at things. Yeah, exactly. How about hucking rocks? At animals? And no! pulling false fire alarms. <sighs> okay, okay, I didn't choose yes. fire alarms because I thought if he actually started the fire, it wouldn't be false. Ah, uh-huh, see? So I think I should get points. I Here's but the thing. He is I, the Just fire. know that I'm not thinking that hard about any of these questions. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> and Greg, you are right. We did not start the fire. But you guys all did take down 250 points for that. No one took a lead. But at the end, your score will look nice because it'll have an extra 250 on there, if nothing else. We've got 500 across the board. I hope it's a three-way tie and there's an artistic challenge at the end. So do I. Yes. So he was seen fleeing the area where uh, he falsely sounded a fire alarm. And then later that day, they caught him on a bridge throwing rocks at cars. Uh, That's a highway bridge. So imagine traveling down the 99 and somebody's... Chucking rocks off the side. I have thought about that actually. So he uh, he's an asshole. He had a he had a little day where he thought he was gonna pull a fire alarm, throw some fucking rocks off a bridge. To my knowledge, he didn't hit any cars. He must have had bad aim. Uh, maybe he had some poop on his hands. <laughs> Made he's it slippery. Doo-doo hands for sure. <laughs> slippery rocks. <laughs> Is his nickname the doo-doo hand killer? <laughs> you know, there's no nickname question, but that would have been one of the fake answers <laughs> if, if it had been the for doo-doo sure. hand killer. <laughs> not chocolate it's doo-doo baby it's doo-doo um so he is arrested for the fire alarm for throwing the rocks cars in 1966 he's now 15 he enrolled he's enrolled in a military school by his parents uh to try to quote fix his problems yeah it's gonna fix it. um, the school the school was a notoriously tough one one of the ones where you know the drill sergeants real in your face and it's you know it's 1966 so i still imagine like drill sergeants were like Whapping them across the back of the legs with their leather whip, you know, it's a it's it's a different uh, situation. Exactly. Do you think boot camp is? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I didn't uh, know drill sergeants. Did that. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, <laughs> Cotton Cotton Hill used one on Bobby. <laughs> oh, is the riding crop? That's yeah. just because Cotton yes. Hill was a dick. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I'm dick. saying. But Cotton Hill was uh, was probably uh, riding high around 1966. Anytime I yeah, think of drill sergeant, men. I think of Major Payne. <laughs> that's my <laughs> only drill sergeant. <laughs> Ever. I think of actually uh, Arlie Ermy, rest in peace, from uh, Full Metal Jacket. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's what. Is that the first scene? That, to my understanding, uh. is like the idea behind this school. Like, it was the toughest on the worst kind of shitheads. So they could fucking break them and they can go back and be slightly decent, profitable members of society at some point. What? A government program trying to break people? <laughs> no way. Shut the front door. <laughs> I thought you said your mic was going to be on mute. My so, bad. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. They tried to break him, uh, and unfortunately, they were not able to. It failed. And while he was in military school, he started stealing money from his fellow peers and on his occasional trips home would steal from his family and friends. Um, he goes home late in 1966, and in early 1967, his family moved to Norristown, Pennsylvania. Uh, very early when he arrives in Norristown, he starts skipping school and stealing money uh, from family and s- students alike. Um, he sounds just like a real asshole. And what's funny is every time there's like some type of move, I'm just going to go ahead and repeat that line. You're going to hear it a lot. He just, everybody he meets, he steals from. And like, it sounds like very obvious stealing. Like he's not sneaky about it. Like, where did my money go? It's like, was Gerald just fucking here? And there was a goddamn 20 sitting on the table and now he's gone. Like. Probably All right, cool. Yeah, Good. Fucking Gerald did it. Yeah, god damn it. He, he did that shit to me last week. Like, that's the kind of guy that uh, Gerald Stano is becoming in every place that he arrives. Um, in 1968, he continues stealing money from Finn's family. Um, at one point, uh, he's feeling, like, really down, and he wanted to be a runner, but he was not a runner. He, the uh, physical activities could not, uh, they didn't come to him naturally, let's you, say. You can't run and play with poop at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> false, <laughs> like yeah. false. Uh, the it's, it's been tested. Uh, he like goes out and asks the track team, like, "Hey, I want to challenge you guys to a race." 
So it's they're a like, great idea. All it's right. a race off. So the whole uh, team. That's almost exactly what he did, but he offered them all some undisclosed amount of cash to lose to him. Now there was no audience for this race. There's no you know, there was no prize to be won. He just really wanted to run a race that he could win, so he paid everybody to run behind him. I already feel sorry for him. Yeah, it's I had um, to arrest this guy for that. <laughs> That is a very awful idea. This is this is Gerald Stano in a nutshell. He's going to be very. That's such a random thing to want to do, though. He wanted to win. He's I think just he never just needed won a victory. In his whole I, life. I think that's very. All he's had is losses. Do you think the others knew about it, or do you think he was like, "Hey, just keep this between you and me, but I'm going to give you, you know, ten bucks to just just come in behind me." Oh. And so he beats everybody, and they're like, "Damn, he actually beat everybody, but I let him win." And do you think that in turn caused a rift in the track team, which is why they didn't go to state because they had no uh, chemistry anymore? This because is really uh, escalating. Because <laughs> Gerald got in there and broke the team apart. Maybe he was working for the other school. Who knows? Yeah, no, I didn't think that. <laughs> this is a bad '90s movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This sounds or a like good Saved '90s by the movie. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I'm, like, I mean, I might great. watch that. I, might watch I would watch it for that. sure. <laughs> Wasn't that just the plot of Swim Fan? <laughs> So oh, he, he, oh my god! I <laughs> love swim fan. He pays the track team to lose, even though uh, he knows that they they ran behind him. It still gives him this huge confidence boost that he he just couldn't get anywhere else. By the way, the money that he paid them stole directly from his father. So yeah, uh, through high school, he's going to habitually fail all of his classes. I shouldn't say all of them. He hab- habitually fails most of his classes, which brings us to question number four. At what age will Gerald receive his high school diploma? Ugh. Is it a true high school diploma or a he, GED? He stayed or in a school. They, of allowed, completion? they allowed him to stay in school. Yeah, so, he, so this is back in the day. So mm-hmm. it wasn't like you got held back three times. You're graduating at 21. Kind well, there's of, you rules. Know what I mean? So the current rules didn't. The current rules don't apply to this these old timey times. We oh. all have some sort of experience in the education yeah. system. Ooh, okay, that, my, at my school, once you're 18, you're out. Ooh, mine's different. So, <laughs> bye. I got, bye this one. I got the number from my school. Okay. Uh, sorry. That's fine. We can. Help you. At my school, oh, okay. once I was 18, I was out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that wasn't a school rule. That was just the age where you could sign yourself out and yeah. leave. <laughs> I've given that all full the advantage time. of that. Yeah, I got things to do today. Kay. I'm ready. All okay. right. We're going to start on the right this time. I went with... 22. Wow. I went with 19. 19. Oh. 21. Travis, you should have gone with your example because it was 21. Damn it. Damn. And you will be receiving 500 points oh. for hitting it on the nose. So Tiffany hits it at 21, getting 500. Boom. Um. This this and, man was in high school until he was twenty one. Yes, he was. Yes, he you, was. Well, you can stay in high school till you're twenty two. That is true too, if you have an IEP. <laughs> they didn't have, they don't I, have an they IEP. Didn't have <laughs> Did he have an individualized education plan? Not in nineteen seventy two. Did he have a five hundred four? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does he have a five hundred four? Qualified for a five hundred four? <laughs> what category was he placed under? Okay, so Tiffany has one thousand points. Travis and Susanna at five hundred apiece. We have. So many questions to go, guys. Don't even worry about it. Plenty wow. of time. How many do we have left? Uh, six. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Six. We are through four of ten. So, yes, in 1973, at 21, he receives his high school dip- diploma. Soon after, he enrolls himself into a computer school. And during this uh, time, he moves into a hotel. Uh, two years later, he graduates from the computer school and starts working at a local hospital. He is fired shortly after being hired for stealing money from coworkers. Surprise, surprise. You're like, whoa, he's kind of fucking turning around. He went to trade school. Yeah. Okay. He's like, oh, a job at a hospital? Like, that could potentially be lucrative and, you know, a good retirement involved in that. Oh, he was stealing his fucking coworkers' (laughs) wallets out of their locker. Uh, So, 
Gerald Stano, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Um, yeah, he's not a very good person. So uh, he loses his job. He stops getting the side gig, which is stealing money from his co-workers. So at this point, he has to move back in with his parents. Um, he's still working, but he's moving from job to job. Why? Uh, he's been stealing from co-workers. Uh, he's tardy and sometimes just doesn't show up at all. Uh, in the mid-1970s, he moves to New Jersey and met a girl. Uh, she was developmentally disabled. Question number five. What was one of the first things he did with this young woman? Did he uh, A, oh, propose okay. to her, <laughs> B, run away with her, C, get her pregnant, or D, get her drunk? So she is, I believe, 17 at the time. He is 22. I totally thought the question was going to be what's her four. diagnosis. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I was already I was like, running I, the, like, I thought the answers were going to be way worse. I was fully prepared to be like, all right, so oh, yeah. getting um, that crazy. real bad happened. The, the details aren't real. The gross details aren't really my, uh, not really my thing. Yeah. We're starting a website for that, though. Um, yeah. Uh, you guys all got answers? Mm-hmm. I have an answer. All right. What do Wait, we got? Can, we, can you repeat the question again? Does he A, propose to her, B, run away with her, C, get her pregnant, or D, get her drunk? All right. What do we got? Run away with her, says Tiffany. Travis says, gets her pregnant. I went run away. Runs away. Run away, a popular answer. Unfortunately, it will not score any points today. He did get her pregnant. Mm. How do we know that's the first thing he did? Uh, the question was, what was one of the first things he did with this young woman? Loophole. One of the... (laughs) One of the... And he did it. <laughs> well, I already her. forget the answer. What was it? <laughs> she, he got her pregnant. He got her pregnant. Oh, no. Says the only male contestant. Yes. So uh, he wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> he started dating this young woman, and within just a few weeks, got her pregnant. Uh, immediately after, the father came after Gerald Stano with a gun and demanded that Gerald pay for an abortion. Oof. Ooh, were abortions legal? I. And he may have known some back alley way if they weren't, but this is uh, going to be 1974-ish in Florida, if you'd like to take a look. I will. I'll Google that yeah. for you guys. So, um, oh, sorry, New Jersey. He's I in New Jersey at this point. I was wondering why he went to Florida. He's, he will go close, to Florida. Close, <laughs> He handles some business in Florida. So uh, he agrees to pay for the abortion. Um, after this, he started heavily drinking and using drugs. This would become a common theme throughout his life. Um, excuse me. <coughs> he agreed to the abortion, but I think losing the child made him a lot more sad than he thought it was going to. Like, I think like he, he wanted to be a, a dad. Heart. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. He yeah. wanted a little, a little Gerald. Which he would with playing with poop. Yeah, yeah. mini yeah. poop. He wanted little, a little poop player. <laughs> like a poop that grows up and talks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So poop he. Junior. It 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 real it. Re- <laughs> <laughs> uh, poop Junior. That's good. That's gold. Greg used that at the beginning. <laughs> um, he. He kind of goes into a spiral. He's drinking constantly. Uh, I, because of the abortion? That's that's what it seems like. Now, here's the thing about Gerald Stano, is if you go home and you Google him, there, there's really not a lot. You have like a small Wikipedia entry, and there's a few off articles that you can find about him. I think there was one podcast that was like a, like a fictional audio play using like uh, non-fictional events and people. Uh, and there's no documentaries. There's no... Uh, and, and I don't do that as a challenge. I do that because sometimes, you know, we scrape the bottom of the barrel just to see what we can find. And and his story is incredibly interesting, but there's not a lot about him. So when I say, oh, he started heavily drinking and doing drugs, normally I can say, you know, he was a heroin abuser or, you know, he started doing cocaine every day. I can just tell you that he started heavily drinking and doing drugs. It I was probably just pot. You don't know which <laughs> drugs. I would never call pot drugs. What year? Um, in the 70s. What I year did the abortion happen? Pot. The, the abortion would have been in, uh, I believe, 1972. Ooh. So it was? was Roe v. Wade was 1973. 
So it was a back oh. alley. Abortions were illegal. Abortion. Abortion. How about that? Wow. So it probably probably messed him up, and he uh, very, very that's, possible. I mean, that would explain the alcohol and the drug use. And if it's the 70s, that's also, I mean, it's around the time of the Manson clan. Am I right? Yes, you are. So he was probably on that whole groovy train, not necessarily with the Manson family band, but you know, in that maybe same a acid, same or similar mindset. Acid seemed to be pretty readily available uh, at this time. I was going to say, I hope that when he started drinking and doing drugs that it was LSD. Yeah, he's like, just I like, hope that's the drug. Is that what those little doing? pieces of paper floating around in my beer were? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he it messes him up pretty bad. He, he goes into a down, downhill uh, real fast. Um, later, his parents wanted him to move to Ormond Beach, Florida, so that they could take care of his grandmother. So he agrees, thinking that, hey, maybe I'll go get some sun, the beach. I'm Is he get, still get with my mind this off girl? No, I don't think he was ever really with this girl. I think in his mind, he had sex with her a few times. Like, this is my girlfriend. I love her. You know, like, she. oh, we, we're pregnant now. And the dad was like, you son of a bitch. Oh give us God. $500 and know this doctor that'll, you know, or however it went down. So they did have the abortion. They did have the okay. abortion. It sounds very much like dirty dancing. I, I yeah. It's not does not sound very far off now that you mention it. <laughs> Damn it, she found me out. Um <laughs> so once he gets to Florida, shit starts to get wild. By the time it is said and done question number six, by the way. By the time it is said and done, he will admit to how many murders? Gerald Stein. Said and done. The final or right now when, when he's in Florida? When it's, when it's all said and done. When uh, By the time uh, we end our story here today, how many will Gerald Stano have admitted to? So when he's caught, basically. This is one of the thousand point stabs, too. So if you happen to get this one on the nose, it's going to be for a G bar. I went really big. Ah, I'm changing my answer. Oh. Ooh. Does the, um, never mind, I'm not going to ask that question. <laughs> I like that you have a follow-up question to most questions. <laughs> I'm not asking. It helps. You it were hel- that student in class. It, 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 it helps <laughs> expand the show a little bit. Everybody got answers? Yes. Let's go Travis first this time. Uh, I also went big. I'm saying 27. 27 from Travis. Susanna. I like that Travis thinks 27 is big. <laughs> That's big? That's a lot because of people. I went 57. 57. Very high. Tiffany. I went lower only because I feel like any higher and we would definitely know who this person is. Yeah. Oh. But I don't know. Twelve. Well, I will tell you that Susanna is going to get the points <gasps> because by the time it's said and done, Gerald Stano is going to have admitted to forty-one murders. Yes. Oh my god! Do I get nine hundred and ninety-nine? Or actually, Travis was closer. What? <laughs> my bad math. He was fourteen off, right? Twenty-seven. It's forty-one. <laughs> well, that's not fair. You already said I got. The yeah, points. I know, but like he technically actually got them. I'm just really bad at math. Wait, hold at, on. At the... How many was it? Forty-one. Forty-one. And yeah. what'd you say? So you're sixteen off, and, and he's I'm fourteen, 14 off. off. Split the points. Split. No. Are you, would you I'll agree split to the split? I'll Travis split agrees to the split. All you right. don't know who you're messing with, Travis. Uh, I'm going to win this game, so it doesn't matter. Oh. I'll split them. But it sounds like you're going to make a deal with the devil. <laughs> Probably. And that's cool because we don't we have a right lot now? of that going okay, on. Okay, so the 125 is, uh, you know, that'll make it interesting. What? For, I thought for it was 1,000. So we've got uh, 1,000 if you, if had, you uh, it. Hit, it on the, oh. hit it on the nose. Yeah, so we've got uh, 625 for Susanna, uh, 8. 75 for Travis and 1,000 for Tiffany. Wait, how am I so behind? You haven't got as many right. That's <laughs> well, the rules of the game. <laughs> okay, let me just write these down. Give a track here. Do, 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 do. Dang it. Plenty just, of game left, guys. That was a. Uh, serial killers. That was a. Uh, Question number six. So we've got four left, and we're all pretty. It, everybody still has a chance. Nobody is mathematically out of it yet. All right. 
So we'll uh, take a little break right here. Uh, we'll come back and we'll finish up the story of certified fuckface Gerald Stano. Come back or I'll kill you. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to get right back into it. Remember, he's now in Florida. The, uh, you know, we all know Florida. We don't have to really talk about it much. It's Florida. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, we decided that shit was going to get wild in Florida. Uh, Travis. I believe it's pronounced Florida. 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 My, my apologies to the great state. We had some America split of Wayne. points because of, uh, we'll call it uh, dealer error. And uh, we're moving on from that. Uh, Gerald is admitted to, he's going to admit to 41 murders by the time it's said and done. I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to list all 41 murders that he admitted to. This is going to be a little dry, but here's the deal. I don't go into details because I don't really fucking like the details all that much. And I don't like to put them out there. I don't like to describe them. I'm just going to let you know about when people died and uh, mostly how they died when that was discernible. So on March 21st, 1973, this was just three weeks after he arrived in Florida, Janine Ligatino, who was 19, and Ann Arsenault, who was 17, were stabbed to death in Gainesville, Florida. So that's two. I'm marking this down. Wait, oh. are you going to write all the 41? I, I don't know if I got all 41. I believe I, I, I may have, though. We're about to find I'm gonna out. I'm going to count them. Okay, yeah. all right. I, I like your guys' moxie. Mm, September 6, 1973, Barbara Ann Bauer was strangled to death in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. 1974, at some point, um, Kathy Lee Scarf is 17. She's strangled to death in Brevard County, Florida. Uh, he is continuing his alcohol and drug abuse. He's job hopping at this time. He's usually fired from these jobs for tardiness, theft, or not showing up at all. Patterns? They're here, you guys. Slightly. They're here. Uh, let's see. Late 1974, Barbara Ann Bauer and an unidentified woman are found dead. In 1975, he's going to stop using drugs and drinking. So this is the tail end of 1975. I want to say that it was December. He just cold turkeys it? That's what he's, he, this is what he's claimed to do. Mm. Question number seven, he's a good dude. How long will he stay off drugs and alcohol? <laughs> oh. So on this, you may stab, but, you know... Time is, uh, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of different times. It could be, so you can stab for 500 points. I do have four multiple choice options. Would anybody like to stab? The multiple choice is 250. 250. You'll double up if you are able to just guess it. I think we should go with multiple choice. Everybody's yeah. multiple choice in this bad boy? I'm, I'm going to be mad if I stabbed it. I'm going to multiple choice it. Well, we all have to agree, right? Yeah. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then I would just write down Two my... Two against one. I'm just thinking about it. I'll just go multiple choice. All right, we're going multiple choice. Was it A, six months, B, 12 months, C, 24 months, or D, forever? Forever, ever? Forever. Hmm. Ah, This is a tough one. 
It is. Yeah, because maybe he was sober, a sober murderer. He might have been. And he was kind of like a lay murderer during his drunk days. That was only six murders. Yeah, I would feel like and I would. Was like, if I 41! Could, <laughs> if I couldn't drink, I would murder way more people. Right now, the count's at zero, so... <laughs> We're doing okay. Those rookie numbers, you gotta yeah. get those numbers up, kid. Yeah, pump those numbers up. That's because we drink. <laughs> All right. I'm not committed. Does anybody have an answer? I, I have one. All right. Tiffany says six months. I, I'm gonna say forever. Travis says forever. I'm gonna say forever. Also forever from Susanna. On question number seven... Nobody's getting points. Oh, okay. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Right. That's better. Yes. That's best for because he is a good dude, but not that good a dude. He's going to stay off drugs and alcohol for right about 12 months. Damn it. That's I'm surprised, though. It's like, long. seriously. It's yeah. Well, immediately. That's what he said, though. That doesn't mean it was real. Now, I believe this is the case. He <laughs> was trying to get in good with 22 year old hairstylist Teresa Esposito. Mm, and I don't think she was murdered. too keen on the. Dr- drugs and alcohol. So I think he was like, "All right, I'll fucking stop," and then like, "I'll get her to love me," and then like, "I'll, I'll you know, I'll slowly man. wean back into yeah. the booze and alcohol." I'll like, change uh, myself for now. For now, she'll get used to she'll it. She'll figure it out. <laughs> so he he his plan works if that was the case because he does start dating twenty two year old hairstylist Teresa Esposito. January third, nineteen seventy five. Nancy Jean Hurd is strangled to death in Port Orange, Florida. On May 15th, 1975, Diana Lynn Valick is 18, and she is shot to death in Tampa, Florida. June 10th, 1975, Susan Basil is 12 and is strangled to death in Port Orange. On June 21st, just 11 days after the 12-year-old murder, he is married to Teresa Esposito, just five months after they begin dating. July 22nd, 1975, Linda Hamilton is found drowned. Jeez. December 17th, 1975, Emily Branch is 21. She is found dead, also drowned. December 20th, Susan Bickrest is 24, is strangled to death in Volusia County, Florida. He's gotten a couple of Susans. <laughs> he, he has. A, now that I'm looking up the list here, you're, uh, we throw an A on the end of this, and you're starting I'm to get next. a little freaked out, right? <laughs> December of 75, he begins drinking heavily again, mm-hmm. and at this time, physically abusing his wife. So, if if he weren't enough of a fuckface and is off time murdering, you know, because because some of these guys have like a fairly normal life and you know they're not beating the shit out of their wife when they're at home, they're getting it out. Uh, yeah, Gerald, Gerald's a go hard. You know what I'm saying? So he's beating his wife and murdering, killing people. Bitches. He he's not getting enough. You know? Well, he at this point he's feeling so powerful over yes. every type yes. of female. I mean, seventy five was a big year. I was thinking <laughs> he had seasonal affective disorder, but now that he's in Florida, no, he's just a fucking asshole. Yeah, yeah, and and remember, th- these are murders that he admitted to. That doesn't necessarily m- right. mean so that he that, that he that committed that. He could have committed two and said that he did forty one, and we'll talk about that a little later. Actually, okay, so. It's the kind of guy that pays people to lose <laughs> That's true. races to He's him. like, I'll give you this $20 bill if you disappear and say I murdered him. I'll give you $16 <laughs> if you lose to me in the 100 meter. Come on. Come on November 11th, 1977. Oh, sorry. Don't no, miss this one. September twenty eighth. That's a that's a really good deal. Um, losing a hundred meters and faking a murder for within four dollars of each other. Yes. <laughs> Same value. That's just, that's just a smoking deal. <laughs> just take both. Just take yeah. both. Bogo. Both for less than forty. Come on. Thirty six dollars. So September twenty eighth, nineteen seventy seven. Joan Gale Foster is eighteen. She is shot to death in Pasco County, Florida. November 11th, 77, Mary Kathleen Muldoon is 23. She is found shot to death in Daytona Beach, Florida. August 5th, 1978, Sandra DuBose is shot to death in Brevard County. Uh, also, in, later in 1978, uh, <clears throat> you guys ready for this? Mm-hmm. The, not mm-hmm. a lot of details on these, so we're just going to give you the rest of 1978 post-August. Bonnie Hughes Emily Branch, Christina Goodson, Phoebe Winston, Joan Foster, and that's it. Yep. 
So How it's an die? additional. Uh, uh, those ones were found so decomposed. The cause of death was not able to be uh, con- discerned. So 75 and 78 were both big years. Six each. I'm not well, going to tally track anymore. Of that. Yeah, this is too much. Yeah, dude, I'm years. keeping track. I just, nope. Just I've been telling telling how he is killing them. Oh, and I'm we're just getting all the stats. Who stat. gave him Dang. the gun? Seriously. Oh, who? With a mental health The same disorder. guy who gave them a back alley abortion. He's like an... <laughs> all, the he, 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 deals, sure that he deals in all things fucking <laughs> yeah. shady. Do you need abortions and guns? I have can do both. Gotcha. Just ask I'm your phone guy. He'll hook you up. Buy one, get one free. For oh $36. <laughs> <laughs> so, Seems to be the going rate for most stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a... It's real rough, real, real rough. So, um, well, you know what? I have a details on Phoebe. Phoebe Winston was shot. Sorry, I put some notes on the side. Is this after. part of the five you just listed? These That's are yeah, these are the ones we just I'm listed. So, Phoebe Winston anymore. was shot. Christine Goodson, uh, no, I just have was killed, but it was in Pinellas County. Um, and December eleventh, Dorothy Williams was found stabbed to death. Tony Van Haddix uh, went missing on February sixteenth, nineteen eighty. February 17th, Mary Carol Marr was found stabbed at the Daytona airport. I can't imagine that the Daytona airport ever has, like, a downtime. That seems like an airport that's probably yeah. pretty rolling, like, a lot of the time. Yeah. A lot of people in and out of that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems oh, like a weird place to find a stab victim. But that's just me. What do I just no one saw. commit a stabbing? No one yeah, saw this yeah, one. yeah. Who the fuck am I? So, no, he stabbed him somewhere else and then just dumped the body there, like just with dumped, the check yeah. luggage. So, is he only killing women? Uh, so far, yes, that is the case. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So, <laughs> on the March 25th, 1980, Donna Hensley identifies Stano as having stabbed her. A report is made at Daytona Beach Police Department. So uh, she is the one that uh, goes missing and gets away. Uh, he does a little stab on her. Uh, she gets away and is able to, uh, uh, to identify, identify him. Good for her. Um, question number eight. What car was the latest victim said to have been picked up in? Can you remind Ooh. me the year? This is going to be 1980. So uh, I'm just going to give you guys the multiple choice on this one. Is it going to be the Ford Cantina, the AMC Gremlin, the Pontiac Fiero, or the Volkswagen Beetle? Damn, I was really hoping the Pinto would be in there. I was Uh, thinking Pinto. (laughs) I should have replaced the Cortina with Pinto. Okay, Uh, so we know what it's not a Cortina. I, I assumed Pinto. Before the multiple choice. Can you repeat them again? Yep, the of course. They're the Ford uh, Pinto, AMC Gremlin, <laughs> Pontiac Fiero, and the Volkswagen Beetle. See, now Pinto's in there, so it could be Pinto. <laughs> no, it's not Pinto. <laughs> Isn't it, you though? Somebody that. pick A. Are you, you, don't, sure? you don't think Greg and I script stuff? I don't know. <laughs> I've a. got a copy of the outline. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> I don't even know what cars existed. I'm... I'm I'm can totally, I go first? Yes, of course. I'm totally guessing. I'm going to say Gremlin. Travis says AMC Gremlin. I want Tiffany to go next. Tiffany says the Pontiac Fiero. Oh, a Pontiac is a Fiero? Yes. Oh, well, I said Gremlin. Gremlin as well. So, Travis and Susanna are both scoring 250 no! yes! points on this I, one. I, I feel like a only serial killers drive Gremlins. I don't even know what a I gremlin don't even know is. You've never seen a gremlin? But I've seen the movie, and that is why <laughs> I chose it. So one more. time I worked, this is a, I'm going to rat on myself right now. I, uh, I worked at an auto shop, and I threw a padlock one time into the air, just randomly. I was like, I'm going to throw this fucking padlock, oh, right? That's a good choice. Yeah, it was a great choice. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> uh, this will be fun. Yeah, and it smashed into <gasps> an AMC gremlin in the windshield. So as soon as I heard AMC Gremlin, I said, uh, "That is what going did you, to be did, the answer." What happened? Uh, like the happened. aftermath. It was like broke. It was like broken down. It had been there for like thirty years. It was like. But not, that was like, oh man, a, par- a point in your life where you were like, "Why did this happen to me?" And I was now very, you know. Yeah. It was all. Why it all that, culminated to this moment, so you could get well, extra points, so I could get points yes. on the Serial Killers podcast. That's what the Gremlin for. is what they were driving when they were singing Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes. Oh, another in reason Wayne's why God world. exists. 
So with that, Travis will take the lead. Do I take second? No. <laughs> no, Mr. Peter. <laughs> He's only up by like 50, right? So Travis has a 125 point lead. Oh. It's 1125, Travis. At Tiffany 125. with 1,000. Ah. And Susanna, close and still very much in it with 875 points. Artistic. Three way tie this for sure. Okay, so uh, she was known to have been picked up by a guy in a red gremlin. He cut her thigh in a hotel room when she insisted that she pay up front for sex. She received 27 stitches. Uh, after cutting her, he berated her for having, uh, being a sex worker. Hmm. So uh, he picked her up, mm-hmm. couldn't afford exactly. to pay up front because he wasn't going to fucking pay. Come on. So he cut her and gave her shit about her profession. So at least he's talking now, I guess. We can what confirm. Is- Great person. Yeah. Uh, he seems like the original nice guy. Like, hey, baby, you know, how about you just get with a guy like me? And they're like, no. And he's like, well, fine, fuck you yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like you anyway. So cut your uh, thigh. She, she's able to identify him after the thigh cut. Uh, at, later that day, an officer spots the AMC Gremlin near the crime scene. He runs the tags, and it came back as Gerald Stano, the registered owner. Uh, Gerald Stano, as we know, had quite the rap sheet already and was a prime suspect in several assaults on sex workers and was positively ID'd by the victim. April 1st, 1980, police bring Stano in for questioning relating to an attack on a sex worker. During this interrogation, Stano confessed to assaulting the sex worker. Later, during the same interrogation, he confessed to the murder of Mary Carol Marr. So... He, he got brought in on, a, on an assault charge. They were bringing him in to talk about an assault for He's like, sexual. I murdered Mary! Yeah. That's, that's oh, kind of... what a dummy. Yeah. What a silly... <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> know how to murder goose. people. <laughs> well, he does, I guess. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. So, um, he killed Mar because she rejected his sexual advances. Greg, I think you might be totally right. <clears throat> Original nice guy. That's what I'm saying. Did yeah. a guy... Did, would, was he known for his fedora? <laughs> I, I can't confirm it, nor do I have a picture of him in a fedora, but that doesn't mean I won't uh, either, one, search very hard to find one where he is, or two, Photoshop a photo of one with where he it's, is. It's sort of like Rule 34 without the porn. Mm, yes. <laughs> Just with fedoras instead. Right. <laughs> like what? What's Rule 34? That there's, if, the, if you think about something on the internet, there's porn of it. And uh, rule thirty-five is if uh, there you can't find the porn, then it's you're obligated to make it. Yeah. <gasps> oh God! <laughs> Why did you? <laughs> oh no! Why was that your reaction? Oh no! <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's <gasps> oh, move on. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> she had some ideas, guys. Like, this is a creative we space. Can we okay? cut it out? <laughs> Edit. Edit. So. Oh. Um, yeah, he, he gets bring in, brought in for the questioning relating to the uh, attack on a sex worker. He admits to the murder of Mary Carol Marr. Uh, he stabbed Marr because, of course, she rejected, rejected his sexual advances. He's the original nice guy, as Greg said. He stabbed her repeatedly in the chest and then in the back. Uh, the chest was because he wanted to kill her. The back was because he was angry at how much she bled all over his gremlin. So he had he had he had residual anger after the murder and was like, "You fucking got blood all over my car!" and he and he started stabbing her again. Stab you some more because oh that makes God. sense. Well, I mean, this is a dude that used to play with this shit at a very yeah uh, yeah. So, um, you know, now I'm really starting to hate him. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I don't still feel, feel, feel he's like you what eight murders. It's in not by that I feel bad for him. I just feel like. He was set up to fail. Well, yeah, he was, but well, I mean, yeah, like, at but this point, so I think we the should have and found and a way we're to fix him. right. We're not professionals at all, but Greg and I stance is always like, yeah, he went through a lot of shit, but how many people went through very similar circumstances that did not murder anyone and also did not well, play with their shit? Truth. And if that's true, Truth. call in now. Yes. And we'll be happy to take your calls. We are live here. So. It is uh, 1-805-666-2513. Oh, I love it. The 666 We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, yeah, we do. Call, fuckers. Uh, so um, her body is found posed, lying on her back, and covered with branches. He signed a confession to her murder and was charged with first-degree murder and was put in jail. April 15th, 1980. 
Tony Van Haddock's body is found near Daytona Beach. She had been stabbed multiple times in the head. April 9th, 1980, Stano confessed to the mur- murder of Tony Van Haddock. Yeah, that was a girl. Yeah. Uh, September Wait. 9th. <laughs> she was found on April 15th, but he confessed on April 9th? Is that what I said? It took him a while to find her uh, after, May he, 9th, after he confessed. May 9th, I apologize. May, May 9th, 9th, Stano confessed to the murder of Tony so Haddock. So almost a month later. Mm-hmm. Okay. He couldn't contain it. Nope. Yeah. Uh, September 2nd, 1981, Stano pleads guilty to the murders of Mary Carol Marr and Tony Van Haddock. Uh, and Nancy Hurd is... Yeah. Uh, and Nancy wow. Hurd and is sentenced to life in prison. He also admits to murdering Ramona Neal, Linda Hamilton, and the unidentified victims, uh, but is not charged for these three murders as there's no evidence to prove We're, that it was him. Those are all repeats, right? Mm-hmm. Like those yeah, are all yeah I don't believe I'm giving you guys anything new. Okay. So I may not have reached 41. You yeah, not yet. No. Not even close. Good, because that would have been awful. Uh, yeah, like there, there, uh, before we even get there, there's a good chance he, he maybe did two of these. Right. That's that's what what I'm thinking by the like he's just saying yep, it, it could have been yep, more and I'll I'll, I'll he give you kind people of people to die <laughs> I'll give you uh yeah, these people are really die these people are really dying 70s in Florida was fucking wild if you think about it because Eileen Wernos was out there doing some shit mm. Ted Bundy was out there doing some shit and it's uh, the 70s and there's yeah. cocaine so everywhere. everybody was doing shit you got smell cocaine yeah <laughs> it's a, it's a it's it's wild in Florida, I, and I think that like people think that wild that Florida is very wild, and I and I recently read something about how it's the state, one of the few or the only state that has open police records. That's why everybody thinks Florida is so fucking crazy because oh, it, it's all public. You can just go and look at all of the arrest records for everybody and all the wild shit that happens, which is. Uh, closed documents in most states. In Florida, they're like, no, here, here you go. You look at what this... I admire that transparency. Yeah. It's mostly people doing flocka, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Bath salts and whatever else. Also, a child got eaten by an alligator. That is true. And Disney World. Uh, oh. I, I remember that. That's scary. Yeah. So, um, he's he's pleading guilty to pretty much everything they, they throw at him, it seems like. He's sentenced to life in prison. Um, also admits to, re- to the repeats we talked about uh, in 1982 while he is in Florida State Prison. He becomes angry. He's not receiving enough extended attention for his murders. <laughs> what did he do when he did not get enough attention? Question number nine. Was it A, admit to more murders? B, try to kill himself? C, divulged more details about his initial uh, admissions of murders? Or did he, D, completely refuse to cooperate with anything in the future? Did he admit to more, try to kill himself, gave more details about his already admitted murders, or refuse to cooperate anymore? We're getting down to it, guys. Question number nine. All right. What do we got? More details, says Susanna. Just more de- to everybody details. Everybody says oh, no. more details. Three-way tie. But, you guys. Oh. <laughs> we all suck. You're all wrong. He just went ahead and kept doing what he's been doing all along and admitted to some more murders. He confesses to more. Sharf, Bickrest, Muldoon, Ligatino, Arsino, Bauer, and an unidentified woman. Hughes, Valak, Branch, Goodson, Winston, Foster, Basile, DuBose, and Williams. He was holding back on all those for a few years, apparently. Uh, so that's what he did when he wasn't getting what he felt enough attention after a, a little while in prison, two years. Uh, in June 8, 1983, he pleads guilty to Bickrest and Muldoon deaths, and he waived his right to a trial. The same judge as before sentenced him to death for these murders. In September of the same year, he's convinced of, uh, he was convicted of Kathy Lee Scharf's murder and given the death penalty by jury. He confesses to more victims over the next three years, but is not known if they are all true or just ones uh, that he heard of or was given details for. No further charges will ever be filed. 1985, uh, the conviction and sentences were all confirmed on their appeals. May 22nd, 1986, a death warrant is signed and he appeals. Of course, why wouldn't he? July 1986. He's now 34 years old at this time, by the way. Oh, my God. Uh, he, grant, he is granted a stay of execution. On June 4th, the second death warrant is signed. He appeals, and an exe- execution date is set for August 26, 1987. 
Stano files for writ for habeas corpus, claiming an effective counsel. He's granted another stay of execution and again loses the appeal. So it seems drawn out, but this is exactly how every death penalty mm-hmm. case goes. Yeah. And, and that's why it takes, I believe the average is up to like 19 years in California or something to execute somebody on death row. And it's just going to continue to go up. So uh, I don't think anybody's flipping the switch on anybody, unless you're in Florida or Texas. Hmm. They don't really seem hmm. to give fuck around there. Yeah. They, they just, uh, Bye. how you Bye. say, yeah. Get, yeah, Bye, get, y'all. It, get it done. So, um, he's losing the appeals. It's not going good for him. 1997, skip ahead 10 years. The third death warrant is finally signed by Florida Governor Lawton Childs. The date is set April 29th, 1997. In March of 97, he files his third and final appear, appeal. <clears throat> and uh, again, he is related to his counsel. So he's saying, I just can't get a lawyer who can represent me effectively. I need another trial. It's got to happen again. Uh, once more, it, it, it's thrown out. His execution does get pushed back to May 30th, 1997. Uh, before his execution, uh, the method of execution is going to malfunction uh, while it's being used on Pedro Medea. Uh, Stano's got to hang around and wait while they fix the method of execution. <laughs> Uh, so can you imagine the build-up there? I'm just confused. What do you expect when you openly admit to killing all these people? Oh, but but hang on. I need to appeal my, my death sentence. But he wasn't yeah. right in the head. Yeah. He, he had seasonal affective disorder. Oh, oh, that's what that was. Okay. Diagnosed official. I diagnosed him as certified fuckface. That, it was early for me, though. I may have gone a Is little early on that, but... Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Page perfect. I think. So, for the final chance for anybody to pass Travis. So, Travis, if you get this one right, you cannot be beat. You cannot be beat. <laughs> I hope you feel good about it. I feel fantastic. Susanna, if Travis misses and you get it right, you can tie him. And he'll be which, regretting which and ruining will, the day that he split points with you. <laughs> which will trigger the artistic challenge. <gasps> but I'll be out completely. No, you're ahead of me. You, oh, I am ahead of me. You, I if you get, get it, it right. right and Travis misses, you will win the show outright. Let's all forego this question and go to artistic challenge. <laughs> We're not tied, though. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no tie. Travis Says is... the last place person. <laughs> hey, smart, though. Smart, though. I do yeah, like that. I love how we all paused and like kind of thought about I it. I looked around. I, I, was like, hey, they... I was like, I think we're doing it. Yeah, I was like, they know each other better than I know them. So let's see. Question number 10. In what way is Gerald Stano executed oh, on wow. March 23rd, okay, 1998? 98. 1998. 1998. And it's Florida. 98. March 23rd, Florida. Florida, 1998. In what way is Gerald Stano executed? Can anybody take Travis off the top? Let's see what happens. How are is he executed? Google? You are not <laughs> allowed to Google. Wow. It's Florida, so it's got to be some crazy shit. I, w- I wouldn't. I mean, you're in the lead. Hanging. I wouldn't go giving away answers. But he was, crocodile. They attack. dropped him out of a plane <laughs> with no parachute. They took him to a Disneyland resort. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he stood went to next Disney to World. The water. Mm. Well, what year was it? Ninety-eight. 98. March twenty-third, nineteen ninety-eight. The anticipation feels like as if you were sitting there while your means of execution had just broken down in front of you, and you have to sit there and watch them uh, repair it. That's what this anticipation feels like right now. I know how Gerald Stano felt. Everybody got an answer? Mm -hmm. So how do we want to do it? Do we want to see what Travis has got, and he's just the outright winner? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany and then me. Okay. Let's see it, Travis. I I feel like I fucked up. Did you put Disney World? (laughs) No, I put lethal injection. Lethal injection. I will tell you that that is not the correct answer. That's what I, that's what I figured. Oh, shit. One of these two ladies here. Did anybody else write lethal injection? No. Okay. I is did. there any other I did. way? Okay, what? so... So I definitely did not win. You definitely did not win. You could still come in second. Now, Susanna, if you got it correct, you will... Ah! 
have tied Travis and triggered our first artistic challenge in a very long time. What other way is there to die? <clears throat> did you say the electric so chair? I did. Then you have just tied <gasps> Travis <gasps> yes! and have triggered a tiebreaker. I was like, no, there's no way. For it is too, he challenge. said, like, that's what I it. thought. He like, said, 1998, like, electric chair in 98? Come on. This that's what I was a, thinking. There's no, no way. Let me explain. This was a host malfunction. He said, imagine this is like you are sitting here. That's what I was thinking about lethal injection. To fix it. No, you lethal injection. I said the means of execution. No, you said it, and you would play it. And <clears> but I, it. I even won. when he said that, I was thinking lethal okay, injection artistic too. Challenge. It, it could be a gas chamber or uh, yeah. a oh, device of. Oh, I forgot of... about the gas. No, that doesn't really happen. I think gas that happens. Chamber? I think it does. I, don't I think, think it that happens. Not really America. anymore because no, we can't get the 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 chemicals any longer. I was winning for so long. Oh my gosh! So Greg, so on top of the world, Greg. I it's will. Partly uh, Travis's win, I will if you give win. you a, a few seconds to think about this. I'm going to go grab a couple pieces of paper, uh, and when I get back, you, if you could please give us the uh, artistic challenge. I'll be right back. Just Absolutely. Go I'm going to do the artistic challenge too, just for participation points. I like that. Sure. Kind of out there. So just really quickly before we get into this, as well as all of the firsts and longest and all the cool things I told you before, there has never been an artistic challenge due to a tie that I can remember. Has there been a tiebreaker? Um, there have been art. There have not. There have been artistic challenges. Yeah, there have been artistic challenges that meant a lot for points or like determined a winner, but there's never been one because there was a tie at the end. Another first. Yes. Uh, I think there might have been one. I oh, think there might <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> okay, so Greg, have you decided what our contestants will be drawing for the victory today? Yes. Artistic challenge for uh, episode 51, tiebreaker. I want you to uh, channel your inner child. Poop, poop. It is. Yes. It is poop. Fuck yes. It uh, is. I want, I, I, I want to see uh, what you think his favorite poop sculpture was. His favorite poop sculpture. Well, he played. He played with his poop. I'm guessing he. Uh, I'm guessing sometimes it was an okay. airplane. Sometimes it was a car. Sometimes it was a toy gun. So Greg's challenge, in short, sounds like give him your best Gerald Stano poop sculpture. Yep. What are we graded on? Complete creativity. I, if I know Greg well enough, it's not it's always. It's subjective. definitely not always. It is cool. very subjective. Totally. That's awesome. It is Great. not always. Uh, I believe the one time uh, that it determined a winner last, Greg chose stick figures uh, because the uh, the drawing uh, went well for him. He liked. No, it's because I recognized a blowjob. Oh, in that's the background. right. Stick figure blowjob. That is why you. Uh, so now you guys have a little hint on how. Oh, what so Greg, yeah. Greg likes blowjobs in the background. Good. To Who know. doesn't? Um, That's I was, actually why I was going to say it up the you want to you want to pander to your judge. So <laughs> I also accept bribes. Remember, this is for nothing. So <laughs> remember, you <laughs> yeah. win. Nothing. This is for zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most ridiculous art challenge ever oh. I've ever been involved in. I just want you to realize that you're an adult drawing poop sculptures <laughs> for is... literally no prize. <laughs> and while you guys are hanging out, I'll give you a I'll give you a picture of Gerald Stano, since you're not having to draw him. I feel like he definitely has a comb over and uh, blue blocker shades. I like normal I keep glasses. I'm imagining blue um, Jesse from Friends. I mean, um, excuse me, Full House. Yeah, I, <gasps> oh, how yeah, right was exactly. I? That was pretty damn close. He's got a thin mouth. There you go. Ah, uh, yes. He looks mouth like a... Uh, he He's like very Beaker. Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. Yeah. <laughs> or like Beaker from uh, the, Muppets? the Muppets. Me, me, me. Yeah. Me, 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 me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's all about you. All right. How we, uh, how we feeling, guys? Everybody got it? Oh Got your poop sculpture ready? <clears throat> All right, Greg. I'll show you Tiffany's first, since she it's just participation. since she can't win. This one's for participation. I'll just give it to you, so you can uh, you get to see it too. You know, this is. All this right, one's but on the other two, treat. don't tell me. Don't uh, tell me of what's what. That, yeah, that's 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 what I'm gonna give you this one first. Oh, I so, narrated mine. It's like like a poop snowman. Some I some see some that. I like the I like the steaming poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh let's no, grab just. another one here. <laughs> Poop knife. Poop knife. Poop knife. Every, everybody, every house needs a poop hey, knife, and it's got a shadow. 
I love, what right. are the, those it's kernels? Got, it's got peanuts in it. In there? There's peanuts that I can appreciate. and corn. Yeah, don't forget corn. All right. I and, made a poop uh, knife as well. Oh, look at that. But I have a lot on mine. There's a, there's a lot going on. There's oh a there's God. a poop knife and a poop gun. Poop on penis also. Yeah, there's, yep, there's, a, <laughs> there's a poopy penis up here. A blowjob. And it just says blowjob. Wait, is this here. the mouth? Oh, I think there's a mouth here. <laughs> wait, wait the, this looks like the chin. And then this is the mouth. No, this is just... I get it. It's a, it seems like a missed blowjob. Like a blowjob in the dark. <laughs> also, it's, probably, it's, a, it's a poop covered it's penis. It's a CJ. So it's a chin, a chin, a chin job. There's a lot of blowjob action. <laughs> Poop on penis. I really appreciate it. In that case you didn't caption. notice. I gotta say though, that one's a little busy. <laughs> um, I prefer the simplicity of the poop knife. All right. So Travis, you have won the artistic challenge, which means you have won episode 51 of the Serial Chillers podcast. Oh, so Congratulations, Travis. Thank Congratulations. You. It's Travis. a great game. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm going to keep these. Sorry, you guys' creative purposes are mine now for Instagram posts. Uh, <laughs> give me that. Give me that poop. Yeah, yeah. Give me that poop, snowman. <laughs> Do you see the stick figure? <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he was enjoying the rain of shit. <laughs> that one, if that one had been in it. Oh, don't it, tell her. It'll just kill her. <laughs> if that It'll one had been in it, it her. probably still wouldn't have won, but nah. it would have been a close second. It would have been a close second, Greg says. Well, congratulations, Travis, on your victory. Congratulations, Susanna, on closing the gap late. Thank you. Congratulations, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> Tiffany, on holding the lead the entire time. <laughs> and then losing it all. And losing it right at the end, which is how much of the Serial Chillers podcasts <laughs> work. So before we sign off, do you guys want to throw out any social medias, anything you want to plug, anything throw out there today? We'll edit this out if you don't. No worries at all. Anybody? Anybody? Travis does really good graphic, graphic designing stuff. Yeah. Ergo poop knife. If you want some of that on a sticker... T underscore Erp. Thank you. Is I that it? Yes, I appreciate that. <laughs> I have an adorable tuxedo cat named Lily. Okay. If you'd like to see her, Chronicles of Fox. Of Fox. I'm not sure my Instagram handle, so you'll just have to find her. Find uh, Lily. Lily the cat. <laughs> also, I don't think we should uh, let Tiffany off so easily here. She runs a fantastic company. Oh, What's it yeah? called? Uh, the Cafe Keto? Yeah, so if you're into ketogenic treats, I believe the handle is just at the, the Cafe, Cafe Keto, Keto, right? Hey. Uh, and she posts one. I'm things. at Farmer's Market in Visalia. There we go. Every Saturday, 8 to 11.30. Where's all locals at? Where Come give me your money. Locals? <laughs> I'll give you treats. <laughs> Buy my shit. <laughs> And see, that's what that's what everybody wins here at the Serial Chillers podcast. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of airtime for nobody listening. <laughs> there must be like two people. I, I you know, I uh, I try not to look at the stats. They make me sad sometimes. <laughs> Co-host Greg, anything you want to throw out there at the end, my good friend? Yes. What can I help you with? Um, at Hella Greg on just about every platform. Uh, I forgot. I ha I found out I had a Snapchat last night. Um, that is uh, still the username. Still Hella Greg. It's just spelled backwards, so it's Gurgula. Um, <laughs> Practice that. That just like rolled right off the tongue. Well, it's pretty easy. Gurgula. My name backwards. Um, yeah, that was about it. Just add Hella Greg on every platform. You can find so me. So find co-host Greg. If you find the social medias, you can find the bunker. The clues oh, 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 and there's a subreddit. Oh, that's right. We started a subreddit. We're doing our yeah. best to stay active in every way we can, but it is just our Serial Chillers podcast. So yeah. come find us on Reddit and uh, give us some, give us some up. You want to go to www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Serial Chillers podcast. Yeah, come give us some up, dudes. <laughs> so... Uh, that's pretty much it, you guys. That was the story of Gerald Stano. I appreciate you guys uh, traveling to be here. That was very cool of you. Uh, thank you for staying late night with me. Thank you, co-host Greg, uh, for being here. Uh, every time you're here, man, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. For sure. Happy so, to do it. Uh, again, thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Greg. And thank you, everybody, for listening to episode 51 of the Serial Chillers podcast. Bye.
was episode 51. Thank you guys so much for hanging in there with us. Gerald Stano definitely killed some people. What that actual number is, I don't think anyone will ever know truthfully. Uh, I want to thank Travis, Susanna, and Tiffany again for coming out and having to do a little mini road trip to do it. So uh, very appreciative on my end. It was very fun having you guys. You were wonderful guests, and I'd have you back anytime. Uh, it was a very cool end of the show as far as the contest portion went as well. So that was that was awesome. And uh, congratulations again to Travis for winning nothing. Uh, you guys know how to reach out to the show. If you don't, here's how. Serial Chillers Podcast for everything but Twitter which is at Chillers Podcast. So that's Serial Chillers Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and the Gmail account. You can text or call the show. I appreciate that people have been doing that a little more. I love texting with you guys. That's 1-805-666-2513. You can still get merch at SerialChillersPodcast.Threadless.com. And, of course, the Patreon page. You guys know it by now. We're not going to go over it today. We're going to skip it for the first time ever. Patreon.com slash Serial Chillers Podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you again to Travis, Susanna, and Tiffany. Thank you to co-host Greg for editing all these episodes and showing up and having a story most of the time. And I appreciate it. You too, man. Remember, don't talk to strangers.